All right, so this is essentially written from an agency's perspective. I own a small agency here in Singapore. Um, so it's written from that, but it can kind of be applied to anything, right? Um, anything that you want to systemize and either outsource or just make sure that people are accountable for different actions um, along a certain process. Um, something that changed for, for my business a couple of years ago was essentially putting everything down on paper and having a, a proper system and a process for first getting client leads in and making sure that they were viable and we could work with them and they weren't just wasting our time or just going for the lowest price that they could find. But also, um, once you have them as in a client, what to do with them to make sure that they feel confident throughout the whole process. So that's me. Um, been in Singapore a fair while. Um, went to school here, then came back and started this agency about eight years ago now. So it's been going pretty good. Um, so like I was saying, so having systems and processes for dealing with common issues will help you grow your business. Um, using an onboarding process to set the stage to position yourself as an expert once the sales process is finished it will be very, really important to help the client feel at ease and that you have everything under control and looking after their best interests. Um, so the first 48 hours are essentially most important once they've had a look through your proposal They've signed your proposal, signed your contract, sent through the deposit, and then they're ready to go, right? How do you, they usually ask what's next. And if you don't have an answer for them, then that all automatically um, makes you feel a bit silly. So, you know, you need to really start out with that trust um, and to figure out sort of the main issues that pop up through every project, because a lot of them are the same, right? Who has the hosting details? Who has the domain details? What kind of format is your logo in? Is it a vector file? Do we need to convert it from a crappy JPEG file to a vector? Do you have fonts or branding guidelines? And where are they? You know, a lot of things like this. Um, it's really handy to have, have up front. What type of content do you have? Do you have a sitemap ready to go? Um, so it's good to have a lot of this information up front. And not just kind of jump straight into design, which is essentially what I used to do. So what's next? So they signed your proposal and they paid the deposit, because we always get a deposit up front. Um, so when I first started Chilibin, I was interested in just helping people get online. Um, the business side of it really came much later, because I didn't really think it would turn into a business. It's something I started on the side, because um, I had a few websites to do. Um, so eight years later, it's still going, and I finally put some business acumen behind it. Um, so if I'd known that back at the time, hopefully things would have gone a lot smoother. So yeah, I would just wouldn't have had the disaster projects that we've had over the time. But because I've had them, it's been able to learn and, and make sure that systems and processes are better than they used to be, and are not perfect, definitely not perfect, and most things it's still a work in progress, but um, we're getting there. So typically when a, a new project would come in, deposit was paid, I would jump in with both feet and either start, um, start designing straight away and dump kind of whatever project I may have been working at at the time because new and shiny and, you know, things are always better, um, rather than delving through lines of code that I, you know, couldn't fix. So there was no process and no structure for any type of success. I was reactionary um, and poorly managed my time. Some email would come in, I'd jump straight on it, um, get lost in it, and then five hours later, we'd break for the day with, you know, with nothing actually done. So I designed straight in the browser and filled the site with dummy content, stock imagery, got it back to the client as soon as possible only to find out, you know, things like at the end of the project, they didn't have enough co content, they had way too much content to fill that design, they assumed that I'd be searching and licensing all their fonts and images as part of the project. Um, then when you go to set the website live, they send it through to the CEO who absolutely hates it, um, you know, things like that would be good to know at the initial design phase rather than as you're about to launch. 
Um, nobody had the domain registrar information, name servers with the previous company, they had POP3 email hosted on the server, you know, all that stuff that the last thing you want on a Friday afternoon to discover as you try and set up a website live. So having a proper onboarding process, you can provide your client with a comfortable feeling throughout that whole process. And like I was saying, the first 48 hours will help, you know, will help you feel better and make the customer feel better and that these guys have their shit together. Um, so the first 48 hours, I mean, how, how are people managing this at the moment? How responsive are you? Does it take a full day to welcome your client after they've signed the contract and paid the invoice? Do you jump on it straight away, like me, and forget the other projects that you're currently working on that are giving you problems? Or do you have shiny object syndrome? Um, and just will kind of jump on anything else. So are you personal in your communication and how are you setting that tone with the client? Um, how are you setting the stage to talk to the client over the first couple of months? So you generally would have a sales slick, a, a slick sales process and you've sold them on how awesome you are and then all the problems you're gonna solve for them uh, don't let yourself down and once they become a customer it's much easier to get repeat sales from that existing customer and much cheaper than it is to go out and sign a completely new customer so look after them because you've done the hard work already and having a slick system will make it easier for that as well because you know your shit. So we've all in consistency and expectations right so we've all encountered issues in a project that are pretty much impossible to avoid Midway through the project, you've got scope creep, the client disappears, they prefer to have daily phone calls, meetings with each of their departments, you have multiple points of contact with the company, um, and all of them are providing conflicting information. Where do you draw the line, and how do you get focused on actually delivering the business goals that they came to you for anyway? Uh, so the processes go both ways. The less stress that you have, and the less stress they feel, the smoother the whole web design and development process will be. Um, the more likely they also will be to refer you to their friends and colleagues because they've had such a great experience working with you on the project. Um, because when something does go wrong, you have a system and a process around that and it becomes very business-like, so you're not reacting to anything because you've seen it all before. As well, you have it all documented, which means you can grow your team and then you can outsource or hand off that um, to another team member or assistant. Um, so what issues do you repeatedly have with your customers? Uh, what happened on your last five projects? If you can work that out and go through each of your five projects, last recent five projects, and work out kind of what went wrong, what went right, and then you can document that in terms of uh, decreasing the chance of this becoming a problem in future. Or is this something you can write out and save as a template, save as a canned response in Google, um, Gmail, Text Expander, or one of the other tools on your project man management software? Um, what issues are coming up every project, and what are the biggest frustrations that your customer will have uh, with the process of building a website? Are you documenting and addressing issues that come up to, from project to project, so you're always improving, if not? I guarantee your, uh, your competitors are, because I sure am. So, like I was saying before about logos and not transparent, a pixelated JPEG from 2000, and no vectors. Someone sourced 25 photos from Google Images, um, and team photos have been sourced from LinkedIn and aren't consistent to have a clear background with consistent lighting. So add all this information to a document or a follow-up email and save them and send them through at the start of the project so that, um, so that they know exactly what you require from them and what they have to prepare for you in terms of uh, getting their stuff together so you can build exactly what they need. And do they know what's next, right? So if you don't have an answer for that, then it doesn't really leave a very good feeling with your client. We have a basic welcome page that once people sign up for, they go to that welcome page. It's just a small page on our website. It includes the project process, our onboarding documents and checklists, how to book a discovery call to go through everything, and how to book something in our calendar. If we're building an e-commerce site, 
then we have specific documents around that with building you know, product spreadsheets and that type of thing. Um, a good idea and something we'll probably end up doing is a, a little welcome video. Just host that on something personal. Um, add that on Vimeo, YouTube, and just embed it to the page. Uh, we also have a secondary step where we collect content for the clients. And this is probably the hardest initial step because people just don't realize that they need all the content up front. So we, don't, we try not to start any design until we have finalized content or as close to finalized content as possible because you, know, you may design a site or a home page that requires maybe 300 words of text and then once you finally get their content, they might have 50 words or they might have 5,000 words that they're trying to cram onto a page. So, I mean, having all these processes helps you establish yourself as a consultant and kind of someone that they can come to to make, make their business and target audience needs come to life rather than doing it themselves on Wix or Squarespace. So, and if the client can't figure out something, then you can provide them with the right amount of information. Um, for example, if they don't know how to get the right information from GoDaddy, you can have a little snippet that they can send to tech support and that type of thing, or the little value adds that make you more valuable throughout the whole process. Um, so people feel much better when they're led down a garden path rather than, um, and you become uh, an important part of their business. You can anticipate their needs because you've worked with them closely and you know what's coming next um, because you've done it all before. So you end up helping people. Clients will always have questions. Um, just make sure you have the answers. So I'll run through a little bit about kind of what we do for our, for our process. So um, we use a piece of software called Process Street. And that's kind of a little bit of an overview. I don't know how easy that is to see, but I'll run through it kind of page by page. But essentially, we load this whole process in and our project manager follows this process and kind of checks off checkbox by checkbox as you go through a certain thing. Um, so at the introduction, we collect some client information, collect some web server hosting information. Um, do a, let me just copy these. To the next. Yep. Um, so clients, uh, where are we? All right, so the introduction, we collect some client information. That's, you know, basic name, email address, and who the primary content for contact for the project is going to be. We collect the web server and the hosting information. Um, go through, we do a client setup and a welcome email, getting started, what we need um, from the client throughout the process, and that just helps kind of position ourselves and make sure that they come back to us with all the right content. Um, we set up a contract and get that uploaded into our project management software, set up the accounting and send them the deposit and then duplicate a project within our project management software and set up a Slack channel and invite our team members so we can communicate around that project and it's all in one area and not getting lost um, on a thousand different emails. Um, we then go through and do a discovery meeting. Um, so we send through email agenda and things like that. So. Let me run through here. So, as I was saying, I had all this already. Hey. Yeah, so that's our kind of really basic client setup. Um, set up the contract, sign contract, and upload the accounting stuff in the deposit, uh, project management. We get them all across onto our management software. We use, we either do a a uh, meeting face-to-face -face, or we'll do something on Zoom and then it records it. We get that then transcribed. So we have access to all that at any time and complete a meeting, meeting agenda in our project management software. So like I was saying, the first 48 hours are probably the most important once, you've, once you have a new client with you. So we outline a fair chunk of stuff that we need from them in that first bit of time. Um, the first 48 hours, so we email them a website outline, how we work as a company and what we need from them, 
a recap of the meeting, including a transcription of um, our discussion, so they can have a copy of that as well. Um, a content worksheet, um, which outlines what pages we need from them, what uh, images, logos, and you know, essentially everything we try and get up front and then some design concepts as well. Design concepts. And then we also look at it from, from straight away as well. If we're hosting, we create them a new hosting account. If the client hosts, then we email hosting referral links so we can get a kickback through that, through our partners. And if they have a host, then you know we have an email done already asking for all this information. So sounds a little long and complicated, um, but these are all just email templates that we send out to them directly. So we've done all the hard work for this um, and tweaked this over the last couple of years. So sending this out is just the press of a button and some of it's automated as well. And then we get shit done, right? Um, so we brief the team, go through a wireframe process, um, do some content, design, develop, test, you know, pretty standard procedure for any web design project. Launch, um, thanks, and then we have a referral program as well. So, you know, after 30 days, we'll contact them, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, we'll contact them and make sure that what they originally wanted is still what's happening for them. Um, we'll run through briefly. A couple of tools. We use Active Campaign for our onboarding process. Um, so we run through a, a sales funnel that way. And some onboarding emails. We use Process Street for our steps, as you know, as mentioned before. And then we use Zapier to get Zapier to connect it all together. And that's essentially how we run um, successful projects. Questions? I went through really quickly. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. So yes, we are open to questions. Any questions, please? Sean, uh, just a question. Uh, many, uh, many clients are non-technical and they are not ready with the stuff, right? So it, it's like uh, we have faced it many times. A uh, client comes with uh, inquiry that he wants an e-commerce website. Right, and they only say that it should look like this. They don't have any products or so ready. Uh, I have asked the client many times, like uh, more than ten times, that do come with a product, but uh, clients are not ready with that. So, how can we help them out in that case? So, for e-commerce, we have essentially a Google Sheet that we provide them with a couple of very demo products already built. And we just ask them to fill in the rest of the details from that. And that's just a quick down download that they can have straight from that onboarding. Once they become a client, they go and download that sheet. And we've got a few little documents that help out in terms of filling that out, in terms of product variations, pricing, sales pricing. You know, e-commerce can get quite complicated, but I won't start an e-commerce build unless I have all that information because the last thing you want to do is get 90% through a project and then discover that they have 15 different types of shipping and tax requirements. Um, yeah, so we try and get as, it is hard, but we try and get as much upfront as we can and be clear to them that we're just not doing anything until we have all the required information because we're just wasting everyone's time. So that helps, right, uh, collecting every information, but it's a a uh, long process, it takes long time, so yep. many clients are not ready for that. So in that case, what happened? What can be the change? I think it's just education to make sure that when a client does come to you and they don't have the information, that you communicate to them that it's their re really their responsibility to provide you with that information. Or if they're not willing to provide you, then you can source that for them, but just make sure you're charging. If it's going to take you, you know, to go in and take photos for them in a place, then find a photographer and go and go and do that. Thank Just you. make sure you're always getting paid. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sean. So, any more questions for Sean? Yes. No. 
Nobody? Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you oh. for coming today. Okay. Thank you.